Hi, welcome back. In the last class, I did the concept called Pascal's law, very important Pascal's law governing the fluid flow. Now today, in the last class, I explained the two applications of Pascal's law, that is number one, in transmitting power at a constant rate, number two, multiplying the power. Now in today's class, I will be solving problems on Pascal's law. All the four problems will be unique in nature and uh, you will be knowing the importance of Pascal's law if you just solve these problems. These problems are also appearing regularly in the VTU exams. So topic is problems on Pascal's law. The first problem I am going to solve. The problem statement is, in an high pressure hydraulic cylinder, a force of 5000 Newton is applied on to the piston. The diameter of the piston is 150 millimeter. What is the pressure acting on the fluid? So this is the statement of the problem and we need to analyze certain th key things here. So I will be, I will be methodic methodically solving this problem and giving you the solution. So just now I quoted the problem statement. The first thing what you have to do is you have to write down the given parameters. First, identify the configuration. So, what is what it is? What is the system? So, the given system is an hydraulic cylinder. So, the given given system is an hydraulic cylinder. So, an hydraulic cylinder has been given to you. Now, you have to note down the given parameters. The first given parameter is the diameter, the diameter of the cylinder. So that is 150 millimeter. So pi is the symbol 150 millimeter. Now which is equal to 0.15 meter, 0.15 meter. Now, what is the force acting on this cylinder? It is equal to 5000 Newton. So, 5000 Newton or 5 kilo Newton is acting on this hydraulic cylinder. Now, what we need to find out? We need to find out the pressure acting. We need to find out the pressure acting. Now, if possible, please write down a small configuration diagram, a symbol like this. So, this is the hydraulic cylinder. So, this is the cylinder. This is the piston. This is the piston rod and this is the piston itself. So, movements, it is, it is reciprocating, the piston is reciprocating, right. So, this is the movement and it is filled with the fluid and a force of 5 kilo Newtons it is nothing but 5 kilo Newton is acting and the diameter is how much 150. If you draw the side view, the diameter is 150 that is the diameter. So, that is equal to D 
and you have to find out the pressure developed. You have to find out the pressure developed. Now, how do you find out pressure? So, what is the job? To find out, to find pressure acting on the cylinder. So, this is the, so let us designate that as P. So, P is equal to question mark. Now, before proceeding, first let us have an approach. So, the approach is straightforward. Let us have the top down approach, that is top down approach means let us write down the general equation for pressure. So, the general equation for pressure is equal to pressure is equal to force by area. So, F is the force and A is the area. Now, what is the unit of pressure? Unit of pressure is Newton per meter square, right. So, F should be in Newtons, A should be in meter square. So, Already F is known, it is given 5 kilo Newtons, A has to be found out because A is dependent on the diameter of the piston, right. So, we need to calculate the area, right. So, what we do is we will find out the area. So, how to find out the area? Area can be found out by putting the equation, since this is a circular cylinder let us find out the area A is equal to pi d square by 4. So, that is equal to pi into d square. So, what is the diameter? 0 0.15, 0 0.15 square by 4. So, simplify this, you will get point 1767 meter square. So, area is equal to 0 0.1767 meter square. Now, put this here in this equation. So, this is equal to force is 5 kilo Newtons, area is 0 0.1767. So, you have to divide this. Once you divide, you get 0. Newton per meter square. Now, we have to convert this into Pascals. We have to convert this into Pascals. So, how to convert this? We know that 1 Newton per meter square is equal to 1 Pascal and uh, we need to convert that from, so this entire unit is Pascal. So, we need to convert this to bar, from Pascal to bar. So, we know that 1 bar is equal to 10 to the power of plus 5 Pascals or 10 to the power of plus 5 Newton per meter square. Further, we need to convert this Pascals into bar. So, we know that 1 bar is equal to 10 to the power of 5 Pascals. So, now we are having how much? 2, 8, 296 Pascals, right. So, use, using this, we can convert that into bar. So, if you round it up, 
you get this Pascal's or bar. So, this is the pressure acting on the cylinder. So, while tackling this problem, few important things you need to keep it in your mind, the units. Please homogenize the units, because it is in millimeter there. So, all of the pascals will be in meter usually. So, make it meter in the initial stage itself. So, the rest of the things are systematically dealt with. So, always it is better to start listing the given parameters, put a configuration diagram, then put the main equation and take the sub equation, solve it, put it back into the main equation, get the answer, further simplification. So, this is the final answer. So, this has to be done systematically one after the other. So, minimum three steps, step 1, step 2, step 1 is the give listing of the given parameter, step 2 is drawing the configuration diagram, step 3 is the main equation, step 4 is the auxiliary or the sub equations, then substitutions and then the final answer. So, this is the flow. After completing this problem and understanding the variables involved, let us move on to the next problem. Please look into the statement of this problem. In an hydraulic press forge, the input cylinder has a diameter of 50 millimeter and the output cylinder has a diameter of 200 millimeter. A force of 3 kilo Newton is applied at the input cylinder. What is the force at the output cylinder? The forging operation needs the plates to be moved by 120 millimeter. What is the movement required at the input cylinder? So, this is the statement of the problem. This is an application problem. This is application where we are using power press. So, forging operation requires power press. So, power press is nothing but we are having a two cylinders, one small cylinder and one big cylinder and we are what transmitting the force from smaller cylinder to big cylinder and we are multiplying the force. So, let us solve this problem as follows. Let us solve this problem. So, as usual you should identify the application. So, this is an hydraulic press. So, let us list this parameters first identify the configuration. So, the given configuration is an hydraulic press used for forging an hydraulic press used for forging. So, what is forging? Forging is basically hot working process. So, it is basically a shaping process. Now, what are the uh, parameters given? So, we need to note down the parameters given. That is, uh, he says the diameter of the input cylinder is 50 millimeter. So, let me take the diameter 50 millimeter. It is a circular. Next, he says the diameter of output cylinder is 200 millimeter. So, it is 200 millimeter. So, in input cylinder and output cylinder. So, output cylinder is, so let, let me input cylinder, this is output cylinder, right. So, along with this, he has given information regarding the force acting on the input cylinder. So, it is 3 kilo Newton. 
3 kilo Newton is nothing but 3000 Newton. So, it is acting on the input side. So, also he has given the stroke length, the stroke of the output cylinder is if I call that, that as x2, it is 120 millimeter, 120 millimeter stroke. So, I will show you this in the configuration diagram for better understanding. So, the stroke is 120 millimeter. So, what I need to find out is what is the stroke or the distance traversed by the input cylinder. So, what is the logic here is the distance traveled by the output cylinder is 120 millimeter. For this much load, what will be the distance traveled by the input cylinder? Right. So, this is we need to find out. Also, we have no idea regarding the force. So, also you need to find out F2. So, F2 is the force acting on the output cylinder. Now, this is requires certain preconceived motion. Of course, listing the variables, we need to understand certain preconceived motion. Also, after writing this, preferably if you write the configuration diagram, you will get more clarity. So, how to write the configuration diagram? So, the you draw two cylinders as you draw for the one thick cylinder and one thin cylinder. So, you can draw two cylinders with a common base pipe. So, this is the two cylinders, right. So, you can fit the pistons this is the small piston right and this is the big piston right so you can right so this is the configuration you can if you want you can increase the size also you can increase the size, if you want you can increase the size, so that you can make it more bigger. Right. So, this is the input cylinder, this is the output cylinder. So, we are applying force of F 1 which is equal to 3 kilo Newtons, you have to find out F 2, F 2 that is the force acting on the large cylinder. So, the diameter of this is D 1 that is 50 millimeter. The diameter of the big cylinder that is the output cylinder is D 2 that is equal to 200 millimeter. Along with that he has given the stroke length. Stroke is the linear distance between the two movements initial movement to final movement. So, if I take this instantaneous movement like this, if the piston moves from here downwards automatically the piston will move up. So, it is somewhat like this synchronized movements right. So, it moves down parallelly it moves up small piston moves down big piston moves up. So, arrow direction I have shown right. So, if I take this reference some instantaneous reference here and here. So, this is the movement or the stroke of smaller piston and this is the stroke of larger piston right. 
So, these two movements are present because of the applied force, right. So, this is the schematic of hydraulic press. So, this force is used to perform forging operation, it may be used to perform forging operation, right. So, there will be an anvil here and there will be a press, the head, the hammer head that is going to hit the hot work piece, right. So, this is the schematic diagram of the hydraulic cylinders. Now, after looking into this, we need to find out the force at the output cylinder. The first thing we need to find out the force at the output cylinder. So, let us find out the first one that is force at the output cylinder that is the big cylinder. So, that is nothing designated as F 2. So, F 2 we have to find out, right. So, how to find out F 2? We can apply the Pascal's law. So, Pascal's law says that the intensity of the pressure in the fluid remains constant that is if you apply to this scenario. So, pressure generated in the smaller cylinder that is the input cylinder is equal to the pressure generated in the output cylinder that is the bigger cylinder. So, according to Pascal's law at equilibrium at equilibrium pressure generated in the smaller cylinder will be equal to pressure generated in the larger cylinder. So, P 1 is equal to P 2. Now, you know that if P 1 is equal to P 2 mathematically F 1 by A 1 is equal to F 2 by A 2 because pressure is equal to force by area, right. So, if these two are equal, then you can further simplify this, you can further simplify this force F 1, what is the area pi d 1 square by 4 is equal to F 2 pi d 2 square by 4. So, you can cancel pi pi 4 4. So, you can further simplify F 1 by d 1 square is equal to F 2 by d 2 square, F 1 by d 1 square is equal to F 2 by d 2 square. Now, rearrange the common terms, right. So, what I mean to say is, if you rearrange this, what you will get? F 1 by F 2 is equal to d 1 square divided by d 2 square. So, this is the equation, right. So, this is called as popularly called as force area relationship. So, this is called as force area relationship. So, this is called as force area relationship. So, this is called as force area relationship. Now, according to this problem, we know the diameters. So, this is known, this is known and F 1 is also known. So, F 2 we have to find out. So, please substitute the values as it is. So, we know that F 1 is 3000 Newton, F 2 is we have to find out d 1 square 50 millimeter. So, 50 millimeter uh, you can since it is the ratio you can uh, you need you have the flexibility of directly substituting the value because they tend to cancel whether it is meter or millimeter it is not so 
important now because it is the ratio of same units 50 millimeter square divided by 200 millimeter square. So, 50 millimeter square by 200 square. So, after simplifying press your calcis and you simplify you get F2 as 48 kilo newtons. F2 as if you simplify you get F2 as 48 kilo newtons. 1 kilo is 10 to the power of 3. So, you get F2 as 48 kilo newtons. 1 kilo newton is equal to 10 to the power of 3 newton. Using this relation you get this. So, this answer is important for the next step. So, now we have found out F2, F2 is 48 kilo Newton, right. So, after finding out the Newton, next we have to find out the displacement that is this one, we have to find out the stroke of the first cylinder. Now, let us find out the distance moved by the input cylinder. So, let us the distance moved by the input cylinder. So, to find out the distance moved by input cylinder, we need to have a relationship that is force into distance relationship, right. So, we know that generally work done is equal to force into distance, right. So, in this case we can nomenclature, apply the nomenclature force is F and distance is the stroke, right, the distance is the stroke, so X, right. And at equilibrium, at equilibrium what we get is work done by the system is equal to work done on the system. So, work done on the system is related to the input cylinder and work done by the system is related to the output cylinder. So, that is why they should be equal W1 is equal to W2. So, apply this F1 X1 is equal to F2 X2 cross multiply F1 by F2 is equal to X2 by X1. So, this is called as popularly called as force distance relationship. So, this is called as force distance relationship and it is a very null known fact that force into distance is nothing but work. Now, please substitute the variables F1 is 3, F2 is how much 48 kilo Newton, 48 kilo Newton force multiplication, X2 is how much 120 millimeter, so 120 millimeter and X1 is the unknown. So, simplify this you will get in millimeter, this is the distance travelled by the input cylinder in order to get the out, output cylinder to move by 120 millimeter. So, if I write the uh, locus diagram or the kinematic diagram, if this is the input cylinder moving down. So, the distance travelled is how much 19 20 millimeter correspondingly the distance travelled by the output cylinder will be equal to 120 millimeter, 120 millimeter. So, 
this is the uh, relationship using this we can solve the problem. So, in this problem very important thing you should keep it in your mind that solve it mechanically as I did first write down the input variables check for units write down a configuration diagram represent all the variables on the configuration diagram if possible please represent the movements right represent all the uh, parts functional parts then you apply the Pascal's law find out the force acting after that apply the force relationship distance force distance relationship and find out the distance moved by the second force and finally you have to write down the answers it is customary to write down the answers so answers f1 is equal to sorry f2 is equal to 48 kilo newton you have found out and the distance moved by the input cylinder is so much. Distance moved by the cylinder is so much. Please analyze this problem. F1 is how much? Given 3000 Newton and F2 is 48000 Newton. So, please see here 3 kilo Newton, 48 kilo Newton force multiplication. The stroke x1 is 1920 millimeter, x2 is 120 millimeter. So, this comparison we need to make, right. So, this is how you need to systematically solve the problem. In the examination, you can get two types of problem. Type 1, wherein the data will be given to you, you have to draw the configuration diagram, analyze and solve. In the second type, if you are fortunate enough, you will get the diagram itself. So, if the diagram is given to you, it is very easy to solve the problem and uh, one such problem I am going to solve today. So, this is the statement of the problem, it was given in VTU question paper. In the hydraulic press shown in the figure, a force of 100 Newton is exerted on the small piston. So, the small piston determine the upward force on the large piston that is F2. The area of the small piston is 50 into 10 meter square and the area on the large piston is 500 into 10 square millimeter square. Also find the distance moved by the large piston if the small piston moves by 100 millimeter. So, this is nothing but force multiplication problem. Again it is used for power presses. You have the small cylinder and the large cylinder. In the previous problem input cylinder is the small cylinder, output cylinder is the large cylinder. Please understand like this. So, input cylinder will be always the small cylinder, the output cylinder will be always the large cylinder. The corresponding nomenclature F1 is equal to 100 Newton and A1 is equal to 50 into 10 to the power of 2 millimeter square. The uh, corresponding dimensions and the force acting on the large piston F2 you have to find out and the corresponding cross sectional area is equal to 500 into 10 to the power of 2 millimeter square. <coughs> so, using the Pascal's law, I will demonstrate how to solve this problem. Okay, let us solve this problem systematically. Let us list the parameters. So, given is nothing but an hydraulic cylinder, right. So, it is used for forging press operation, right. So, F1 from the problem statement F1 is 100 Newton and uh, A1 is the cross sectional area, A1 is 50 into 10 to the power of 2 millimeter square. Now, what about A2 given in the problem? 
it is almost 10 times 500 into 10 to the power of 2 millimeter square. This is the small cylinder dimension, this is the big cylinder dimension. So, along with that he has given the stroke length of the first cylinder that is distance travelled by the first cylinder is equal to 100 millimeter. So, these are the variables given. So, we need to find out what is x 2 that is the distance travelled by the large cylinder and to find out that we need to know what is the distance or sorry what is the force acting on the large cylinder. So, if you know force then you can find out the displacement F 2 and x 2 right. So, you can draw the diagram a small diagram you can draw a thin cylinder same a thick cylinder right. So, you can draw this diagram two pistons identical pistons right, but the cross sectional area is different right. So, you can show the rod right, you can put the fluid hydraulic oil. So, this is moving down, so this is moving up, so the force acting will be like this. So, this is moving down, this is moving up. So, this is F 1, this is F 2 right. So, A 1, this is A 2 right. So, if you take the distance travelled right. So, this, this has the common reference if you take the distance travelled right. So, this is so this is x 1, this is x 2. So, represent all the variables in the diagram. Now, we let us find out the force acting on the larger cylinder. So, by applying Pascal's law, one can state that P 1 is equal to P 2, which says F 1 by A 1 is equal to F 2 by A 2. So, we know F 1 is 100, A 1 is 50 into 10 to the power of plus 2 millimeter square. So, F 2 we need to find out and A 2 is 500 into 10 to the power of plus 2. So, this means F 2 is equal to how much? F 2 is equal to after simplifying you get F 2 is equal to 1000 Newton. So, F 2 is equal to 1000 Newton. Now, this has been found out. So, this is equal to 1000 Newton. After this find out the displacement or the distance travelled by the big cylinder. So, for that distance travelled by the big cylinder or the output cylinder. Please watch out for this terminologies small cylinder is the input cylinder, big cylinder is the output cylinder right. So, output cylinder will be going to drive the applications like punching press, power press etcetera. Now, distance travelled by big cylinder how you can find out now at this point of time you, you know the force uh, distance relationship that is the work relationship force into distance work done is equal to what? force into distance. So, what I mean to say is work is force into distance. So, it means F 1 by 
f 2 is equal to x 2 by x 1. So, I will move back here. So, f 1 is how much? 100 divided by f 2 is how much? 1000 x 2 is we need to find out x 1 is 100. So, cross multiply and simplify you get x 2 as 10 millimeter. So, answers are F 2 is 1000 kilo newtons and X 2 is 10 millimeter. Please understand F 1 is 100 newton, F 2 is 1000 newton. So, force amplification, right. Compare the displacements, X 1 is given is 100 millimeter, X 2 is 10 millimeter, right. So, if you look at this, what you can analyze and understand is, if you want to amplify the force, more distance need to be applied on the input cylinder. The more distance it has to travel on the input cylinder, right. So, that is why the displacement here is 100 mm and the displacement here is what? 10 mm, right. So, Merely solving the problem is not enough, you have to interpret the results. That is, you have to compare the results and interpret constructively for better understanding.